Good evening, this is Pamela, and you're listening to Watchmen on the Pot. All right, we're going to continue in our book reading, Code Word Barbalod 666, Danger in the Vatican, Book 1, the Sons of the Loya, and Their Plans for World Domination by P.D. Stewart. Chapter 16, Proofs of Conspiracy. Weshaupt. One of the profoundest conspirators who has ever existed. French socialist Louis Blanc, History de la Revolution, 1848. In the late 18th century, 1798 to be more precise, a man by the name of John T. Robinson, of great renown, wrote a controversial and scholarly work called Proofs of a Conspiracy. The cause celebre of this book was to reveal to the world the most astounding facts which he had gleaned from his research, as well as from a secret meeting he had with Adam Weishaupt, ex Jesuit, and that's in quotation marks. <clears throat> we shall see later in this chapter and elsewhere that, in fact, Weishaupt never really left the Jesuit order. Professor John Robison was no mean scholar. His knowledge of secret societies in particular, the workings of the Illuminati, was held in great esteem around the world. It was relied upon by Reverend J. Morse, father of Professor Morse, the inventor of Morse Code. The credence given to Robinson's scholarship is fully justified. He was the first Secretary General to Scotland's prestigious Royal Society and Professor of Natural Philosophy at the University of Edinburgh. Prior to his professorship at Edinburgh, he was appointed in 1772 Professor of Mathematics at Kronstadt. From 1793 to 1801, Robinson contributed well over 40 articles to the third edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Professor Robinson was also a technical consultant to government departments and private industries. So respected was his research and scholarship internationally that in 1798 he was made an honorary LLD by the College of New Jersey, renowned Princeton University, USA. Robertson's integrity and character were equally respected. We are therefore inclined to accept his commentaries as honest and without bias of any sort. Exposing the Illuminati unknown superiors. Professor Robinson, in a tour de force, exposes the Jesuits' role behind the secret societies, the Illuminati, and the so-called literary, literary, literary societies, whose chapters are to be found in almost every American university, the Greek-lettered societies or sororities. The following facts are brought to the light of day by Jedediah Morse, drawing on Robinson's dazzling delightful volume, Proofs of a Conspiracy. For more than 20 years past, a society called the Illuminati, Illuminated has been in existence. It approves of such atrocious, atrocious principles as the right to commit self-murder and the promiscuous intercourse of the sexes. It aims to enlist the discontented to get control of all such cultural agencies as the schools, library societies, newspapers, writers, booksellers, and postmasters. It is bent upon insinuating its members into all positions of distinction and influence, whether literary, civil, or religious. Robinson goes on to state that this association has been formed for the express purpose of rooting out all the religious establishments and overturning of all the existing governments. The leaders would rule the world with uncontrollable power, controllable power, while all the rest would be employed as tools of the ambition of their own, their unknown superiors. The term unknown superiors will, in the course of these pages, offer the clarification. Giuseppe, 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 Giuseppe Mazzini, who, although one of the arch conspirators of the Illuminati, admitted to Dr. Greninstein in a letter written shortly before his death, we form an organization of brothers in all points of the globe. Yet there is one unseen that can hardly be felt, yet it weighs on us. Whence comes it? 
where is it? No one knows, or at least no one talks. This association is a secret even to us, the veterans of secret societies. Who are these unknown superiors? Illuminate documents seized by the Bavarian police in 1787 from Baron Bassus after a search of his quarters at the castle Sanderdorf and published by the Bavarian government revealed the plan. Do you realize sufficiently what it means to rule, to rule in a secret society? Do you know what secret societies are, what a place they occupy in the great kingdom of the world's events? Do you think they are unimportant, transistory appearances? It was while Professor Robinson was on a sabbatical in Europe that he was approached by the founder of the Illuminati, Adam Weishaupt, who invited him to become a member of his new order. After that meeting with Weishaupt, Robinson studied the Illuminati, and having investigated the ideas and agenda of the order, he wrote, Weishaupt had long been scheming the establishment of an association or order, which in time should govern the world. He hinted to several ex-Jesuits the probability of their recovering under a new name, the influence which they formerly possessed, i.e. prior to their suppression in 1773. It will be observed that Professor Robinson says that Weishaupt sought to conspire with several of several of ex-Jesuits. The order had recently been suppressed, a scheme for the recovering under a new name. Thus we see that Weishaupt's Illuminati was no more, no less, the Jesuit order received under a different name, thereby concealing its antecedents, Illuminism, and Jesuitism but different sides of the same coin. Hence, Weishaupt would boast, our secret association works in a way that nothing can withstand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Infiltrating the organs of power. On February 6, 1778, Weishaupt wrote to his fellow conspirator, Cato, a.k.a. Zwack, a German lawyer and a judge of the criminal court. I propose academics under the direction of the order. This will secure us the adherence of the literary science shall here be the lure. Only those who are assuredly proper subjects shall be picked out from the inferior classes for the higher mysteries. The instruction shall be so conducted that each shall disclose what he thinks he conceals in his own breast. What are his ruling propensities? passions. This will answer all the purposes of circular confession, and in particular, every person shall be made a spy on another and on all around him. By these means, we shall readily discover who are contended and receive with relish the peculiar stated doctrines and religious opinions that are laid before them. At last, the trustworthy alone will be admitted to a participation of the whole maxims and political constitutions of the order. In a council composed of such members, we shall labor at the contrivance of means to drive by degrees, to establish a peculiar morality and religion in the great society of mankind. Say nothing on such subjects to entrance, for we don't know how they will be received. Folks are not yet prepared. Tell me. Oh, you like this. In March 1778, Weishaupt, a.k.a. Spartacus, wrote to Cato, By this plan, we shall direct all mankind. The occupations must be so allotted and contrived that we may, in secret, influence all political transactions. I have considered everything and so prepared it that if the order should this day go to ruin, I shall, in one year, reestablish it more brilliant than ever. Nor will it signify, though all should be betrayed and printed. Said Weishaupt, one must speak sometimes one way and sometimes another, but so as never to contradict ourselves, and so that, with respect to our true way of thinking, we may be impenetrable. I have three other degrees, or different, all different, for my class of higher mysteries, in comparison, comparison I'm sorry, with which this is but child's play. And according to Archon de Rule, in the lower ranks, the nursery, the members were very much in the, the member, 
was very much in the dark as to the way in which the order was run. As he progressed, however, he found that a part of his service to the society was to gain financial and social power and to place them at the disposal of the group. He was expected to be a diligent mason and to try to gain power control over Masonic funds. It was not until the 10th right promotion had been completed the member was given with the grade of priest certain definite knowledge. This included the fact that the Illuminati were proposing to remove forever the feeling of local nationality from the minds of men. The ways in which was this was to be done involved infiltrating high positions in education, administration, and the press. Indeed, one of the first priorities of Westhop was to enlist writers, publishers, and educators. Modern pantheon of atheist thinkers, Darwin, Nitzik, Marx, etc., were either Illuminati pawns or agents. Of one university, Weishaupt boasted in a letter, All the professors are members of the Illuminati, so will all the pupils become disciples of Illuminism. The documents confiscated by the Bavarian government revealed that Illuminati members had to take the following oath. I bind myself to perpetual silence and unshaken loyalty and submission to the order. In the persons of my superiors, here making a faithful and complete surrender of my private judgment, my own will, and every narrow-minded employment of my power and influence. I pledge myself to account the good of the order as my own, and I'm ready to serve it with my fortune, my honor, and my blood. Should I, through omission, neglect, passion, or wickedness, behave contrary to this good of the order, I subject myself to what reproof or punishment my superiors shall enjoin. The friends and the enemies of my order shall be my friends and enemies, and with respect to both, I will conduct myself as directed by the order, to its increase and promotion, and therein to employ all my ability. All this I promise and protest without secret reservation, according to the intention of the society, which required which require from me this engagement. This I do as I am, and as I hope to continue. A man of honor said Weishaupt, we must do our utmost to procure the advancement of the Illuminati into all important civil offices. Weishaupt explains in his letter to Cato, nothing can bring this about but hidden societies, hidden schools of wisdom. This, Weishaupt continues, can be done in no other way but by secret associations, which will, by degrees and in silence, possess themselves of the government of the states and make use of those means for this purpose. In like manner, wrote Weishaupt, we must try to obtain an influence in the military academies. This may be of mighty consequence. The printing houses, bookseller shops, chapters, and in short, in all offices which have any effect either in forming or in managing or even in directing the mind of man, painting and engraving are highly worth our care. It was the knowledge of these diabolical enterprises that promoted Alexander Addison, president of the county courts of the Fifth Circuit of the state of Pennsylvania, to issue the following warning. An absolute and despotic irony by the sect of the Illuminati directed by Weishaupt has the daring ambition of ruling the whole world. That there are secret societies and regular subordination which direct the movement of vast bodies of people. No man who looks at the results of elections will doubt that the press is used to promote the views of such societies will not be doubted. It is evident that every exertion made to fill public stations and places of instruction with men who will promote the spirit and bring it into action. Reader, gigantic confederacies have been formed, secret societies, humanitarian organizations, trade monopolies, even religious organizations claiming allegiance to heaven, but all having as their purpose the setting up of a one world system of government who is now giving a word of warning against these secret combinations that seek to overthrow the freedoms of all lands, all nations, and all people. Who will dare speak up? Will the press do it? No. For although the intimate connection between the two great conspiring powers is now so well established, 
there can no longer be any serious attempt to deny it. Yet, on this most important subject, the great American press is as mute as a sentinel strangled at his watch. And so the masses sleep on in ignorance of the fact an alarm has been sounded. Who is left now to sound the alarm? Who will give the last words of warning? There are few courageous men left, as Joseph Addison wrote, when vice prevails and impious men bear sway as presidents, prime ministers, senators, the post of honor is a private station. In the words of Abraham Lincoln, man must not care how and where he dies, provided he dies at the post of honor and duty. Do you scoff at these revelations? Are you one of those who say that there is no such thing as a universal conspiracy? I ask you this. Individuals or groups act in concert and work clandestinely and collectively behind the scenes toward a common goal to subvert governments. What is that called if not a conspiracy? What is at stake? Liberty of conscience, liberty of opinion, and the religious liberty of all who care for it. Benjamin Drizelli, Lord Beaconsfield, who became Prime Minister in 1868, speaking in the House of Commons, July 14, 1856, hinted at the source of this conspiracy. There is, in Italy, a power which we seldom mention in this house, I mean the secret societies. It is useless to deny, because it is impossible to conceal, that a great part of Europe, the whole of Italy and France, and a great portion of Germany say nothing of other countries is covered with a network of those secret societies that i apprehend is a fact which no man acquainted with the events of 1848 will deny note Zelly spoke of a power and sir winston churchill admitted from the days of spartacus i.e adam weishaupt to those of karl marx another jesuit prodigy worldwide conspiracy for the overthrow of civilization and reconstruction of society has been steadily growing i'm gonna stop there for a minute i have noticed within the last couple of weeks which is really strange that they use this word too and i really believe that there's something about it because i thought what is it? reconstruction 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 everywhere i turn or deconstruction we're going to reconstruct this we're going to deconstruct this all of a sudden, this word is being thrown out there by supposed evangelicals and other people, and I just find it kind of odd. I just threw that out there because I've noticed that, and I just thought it was kind of bizarre. So anyway, let me continue. Um, London Sunday Illustrated Herald, February 8th, 1920. Do you still doubt this? For those who wish to sleep, sleep on, but let us not be knave at our gross expense. And that after brothers and sisters seriously but that is something that's been troubling me and then this right here he mentions it i mean it says and sir winston chills churchill admitted from the days of spartacus i.e adam weishaupt those of karl mark another jesuit prodigy this worldwide conspiracy for the overthrow of civilization and reconstruction of society has been steadily growing. Pay attention, brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open because I'm telling you what, there's a lot of that word going on. Reconstruction, deconstruction, however you want to word it, it's both the same because they want to deconstruct then reconstruct. They want a new world order. You know, <laughs> they want a one world government. It's just crazy. Anyway, keep your eyes on Jesus, brothers and sisters. Nose in the book, which is the word of God. And in bed, the word of God on the tablets of our heart. So you and I will not sin against God or be deceived. Have a great evening.